Oh, man, what a great sound. That, my friends, is one of the most sickening sounds in the entire baseball world. <laughs> That's the sound of a baseball bouncing off the, the green giant out here at Fenway Park. You take a look at this metal monster here. This is, this is, the, this is the fence that has destroyed more dreams, busted up more guys' careers, and incidentally broken more outfielders' necks than any other piece of real estate in the history of the Western man. What a beautiful place. Just swing out around there and just take a look at that great green outfield. Now, this spot, right from where we're looking at right now, this particular spot is the, is the direction and the entire scene that the left fielder sees. And this is where the great Ted Williams played. You know, it's a funny thing about ballparks. About 90% of every ballpark in the world is, is not so much real estate or actual ball games that are being played, but uh, a kind of peculiar folk history. And I can remember as a kid listening to ball games. I lived in Chicago. I was growing up on the south side. And by the way, if you don't know anything about the south side of Chicago, it took guts just to be a kid on the south side, just be there, you know? And, and they had this ball team named the Chicago White Sox. Probably never heard of it. <laughs> and, and every couple of months, there would be a ball game that would be broadcast from Fenway Park in Boston. It was remote. It was, it, was, it was kind of like a foreign land. It would be like a broadcast from uh, Yugoslavia or something. And you could hear the great crowds coming in on these telephone lines. And the Chicago White Sox announcer, a guy named Bob Elson, who's still announcing the games, he had the complete cool of a man who has seen nothing but disaster in his life. And, and, a, and a typical comment by Bob Elson, I remember it coming out of the radio, would be simply, He's out. That's all he ever said. You'd hear the sound of a ball meeting a bat. Then there'd be a long pregnant pause. And Elsa would say, it's a high pop-up. He's out. And another White Sox walk back into the dugout. In fact, uh, that, that whole ball game, that whole ballpark, that whole crowd, all of them played out here. But you know, you guys don't know what it's like to be defeated or to feel the sense of total futility unless you've been a Chicago White Sox fan. You see, the White Sox never win. Or oh, when they do win, once in a while, it's kind of a concession. And uh, some of the ball players that the White Sox had, uh, probably you never heard of these guys. You know, the one thing about the Boston Red Sox, no matter, no matter how bad their season was, they had great colorful ball players. Ted Williams, Dominic DiMaggio, there's a name, you can grab a hold of it, you know, it's got handles all over it. Dominic DiMaggio. Uh, names like uh, Johnny Pesky. Uh, great, you know, great names. The White Sox had ball players with names like Mike Krivich. And that's a name that's made out of old used paving blocks. Chunks of, chunks of tar hanging on it. And a typical White Sox ball player, who, by the way, played right here at Fenway Park, was a, was a White Sox pitcher named Bullfrog Bill Dietrich. I remember the old man every year, my, my father, it'd be uh, like January or March. He's sitting at the kitchen table. He's got his BVDs on with about five buttons missing. He's drinking his beer. He's reading the Chicago Tribune. And he's got this sad look on his face. There's a picture. It says, Bullfrog Bill Dietrich, Inks Packed. And he knew it was going to be another year for the White Sox. It's like, Bullfrog Bill Dietrich, Inks Packed, after holdout. Well, now, you see, <laughs> that took guts, you see. <laughs> Bullfrog Bill Dietrich. Now, you think you've known courage? I remember the year Bullfrog Bill Dietrich held out for three weeks. Why? He wanted more dough. The year before, he had won three games and lost 17, and he was holding out. That takes guts. Well, why was he holding out? Well, it was his best season in three years. It was a great season he had. 
And so Bullfrog Bill Dietrich was so typical of the whole Chicago White Sox ball club, and probably even persists to this day. He had this great style. He was a pitcher. Had these thick glasses. Typical White Sox pitcher. They looked like the bottoms of Coke bottles. And he wore his hat, you know, the kind of hat that, that is just a little bit too small. His ears stick out. This great squint. He played in his very ballpark, and incidentally, many a pitch that Bullfrog Bill Dietrich tossed wound up right here, just like that. Yeah, poor old Bullfrog. And you know, I learned one of my greatest lessons of all from Bullfrog Bill Dietrich one day. You know, where we learn our life lessons, I think we learn them not in school. We learn them from the things that we go to for entertainment. And I'm a patrol boy. I get into the ballpark free one day. You know, they invite all the patrol kids in there. It's a big doubleheader. White Sox are playing the St. Louis Browns. A fantastic ballet of total frustration. The Browns and the White Sox battling it out for last place in the American League. Both of them 37 games out of first. It's only May, by the way. You should have seen where they were by late July. And Bullfrog Bill Dietrich is pitching the last of the eighth inning. The score is two to one. Bullfrog's got him buffaloed all afternoon, hitting pop-ups, hitting those. Of course, that's all the Browns ever hit anyway. Bullfrog is pitching with, with, with two men on. He walked the next hitter, and the park was silent. Bases loaded. Bullfrog Bill Dietrich is out on the mound. What style. He used every minute of his time out there like some great actor. He kicks the dirt. Tui. That guy, Bullfrog Bill Dietrich, could spit like a one of the great masters of all time. You could hear it all the way out in left field when he let one of them go. Pow! He had this magnificent squint. You know that squint of getting the sign from the catcher? Bullfrog has just waved off the first pitch. The catcher is quickly giving him a sign for the next one. Try the fastball. The crowd is silent. This is a fantastic moment. Bullfrog Bill Dietrich has just waved off two signs. He ain't gonna pitch him. And everybody in the crowd knew that Bullfrog had only two pitches. He had his slow, high curve and the one that he threw in the screen. Bullfrog Bill Dietrich has just waved off two pitches. And we're waiting, silent. Bullfrog rubbed up that ball. And then called for time. With that, Jimmy Dykes, the manager, came out of the dugout, and they had a quick conference. I could see Bullfrog's head going up and down. And the next instant, Dykes turned around and waved in a relief pitcher who let in three runs. But the point was, Bullfrog waved off his only two pitches. How many of us have got the guts to admit we ain't got it? Bullfrog admitted it, friends. These are the things you learn out at the ballpark. And by the way, the sound of those balls bouncing off that, that left field stand, listen to this sound. That's a scary sound. That's a scary sound. How many times in our own life do we hear the evil sound of balls bouncing off that far left field corner and never conceding it? Fenway Park. What a ballpark.